Hello and welcome to Install Libre. Today we're taking a look at Net Server version 7.3. Net Server is a CentOS based distribution, with the primary feature and difference from CentOS being modular design and a comprehensive web interface. Upon booting from the ISO, we are presented with a choice of installation methods. We proceed with the interactive installation and see a typical CentOS 7 installer. We choose our time zone, keyboard layout and language. In the software selection, the only available choice is minimal install. Installation destination allows us to choose which drive should the OS be installed on. A selection of automatic and manual partitioning is presented, however, selecting automatic partitioning produces a prompt to reclaim partitioned space, indicating that a partitioning layout has already been defined. Attempts to reclaim these partitions produces an error saying failed to save storage configuration, followed by an indication that no disks have been selected. Going back and choosing manual partitioning produces an unknown error and the installer fails. Upon rebooting, we proceed where we left off, leaving partitioning untouched. Next, we adjust KDump and security policies and review our network configuration. Proceeding with the installation, we set the root password and are given the opportunity to add another user to the system. The installation finishes with no issues and we boot into the newly installed CentOS slash NAT server. Next, we proceed to the web interface, which is the selling feature of this distribution. By default, it's listening on port 980. We enter our domain name, verify time zone selection and are given the opportunity to change the default SSH port, choose whether mail should be sent via smart host and a chance to opt out of usage statistics. After brief self-configuration, we are presented with the network page of the web UI, where we can review and change our network settings. Going through the list of available pages from the top, we can see that we have no applications currently installed and proceed to the dashboard. Here, we are warned that at least one network interface is using DHCP, which is not an issue for our testing purposes. The page itself contains a lot of useful information, being updated real-time. The data includes NET server and kernel releases, RAID configuration, system load, uptime, date and time, network and hardware information, memory and disk usage. Moving down in the list of pages, we open the Disk Usage section. This is a very handy tool, which helps quickly identify which folders are using large amounts of storage. Next is the Domain Account section, where we can choose to configure LDAP and Active Directory. On the Services screen, we see the list of all installed services, their listening ports and basic management features. Next one down is Users and Groups page with the sole Configure button which takes us back to the domain account's configuration. The Log Viewer page allows us to review and follow various system logs, which is certainly a nice feature to have if we are managing a configured server from the web UI. Next to the Log Viewer is the Shutdown page, which is self-explanatory. Moving down yet another line, we have the Software Center. After a moment of pondering, we are presented with a list of available applications. We shall come back to this page after we are finished with the tour. Next page is Network Services. Here we can manage the firewall options for all listening services. Still moving down the sidebar, we have the SSH page. As expected, here we can change the SSH port, as well as choose whether root login is permitted and if password authentication should be used. Under the SSH page, we have Trusted Networks, where we can manage local networks that should have access to the system services. Down below is the Accounts Provider page, which we have seen before, as well as DHCP, DNS, date and time, email and network settings. We can change our company name and contacts, which are displayed in certain areas of the web interface, manage our SSL certificates, change the host name and set up static routes. Now let's go back to the Software Center. We are notified of available updates and a list of packages pending update. We can trigger the update with a single click. After that's done, we can review the list of available applications. We can configure an email server, an FTP server, IPsec, OpenVPN, SQL and a variety of other features with a couple of clicks. For the sake of the video, let's try the web server with a few extra PHP modules. The task completes within seconds and we are prompted to reload the page. Checking the server's IP address on port 80 indeed displays a page rendered by the Apache web server. I get interested in trying out the KVM Virtual Machine Manager. 
Just like the web server, it's installed and configured within seconds. In its settings, we choose whether the VM manager is enabled, choose to enable its own web interface, and are given the opportunity to change the administrator password. The web interface is listening on port 8000, where we can log in with the password presented earlier. We configure a storage pool with a variety of options available and proceed to create our first VM. Choosing from a predefined list of configurations, we click Create, set up basic options, and our KVM managed virtual machine is ready. A multitude of options are available for each VM, as well as some real time stats and a VNC console. Unfortunately, VNC did not work for me, but it may be due to my web browser configuration. Overall, I found NetServer to be quite intuitive and easy to use. It would be a great solution for someone wishing to set up their own server and not quite ready to get down and dirty on the command line. With a variety of applications and services available at the touch of a button, it's a great starting point that still allows to dig down under the hood if desired. As the cow says, subscribe to Install Libre channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.